Good morning. Shall we pray first? <clears throat> Dear Lord, we thank you so much, or I thank you so much for the words that uh, you've helped me prepare for today. Lord, I just pray that it will bless everyone in here um, and that it will improve our relationship with you and our prayer life. Amen. It's, uh, it's lovely to Ephesians 6, 18 to 24. And I've got the privilege of closing the end of this <laughs> passage that you've last, or you've been reading and working on over the period of time. And in this um, closing letter, he exhorts us to pray at all times, be alert and pray for him as well as his ongoing ministry and everything in all present circumstances. So I will read first the chapter. Um, and I pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. Pray also for me that whenever I speak, words may be given to me so that I will fearlessly make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it fearlessly, fearlessly as I should. Tychicus, the dear brother and faithful servant in the Lord, will tell you everything, so that you also may know how I am and what I am doing. I am sending him to you for this very purpose, that you may know how we are and that he may encourage you. Peace to the brothers and sisters and love with faith from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace to all who love our Lord Jesus Christ with undying love. It's funny, Tichichkus is another one of these strange names which... <laughs> For years I've struggled with, and I suddenly one day thought, I know, I'll put it into Google. Stick it in, come, comes up on the Facebook, uh, on the, the, um, on the, the screen, it, somebody, a, a man tells you exactly how to pronounce it. So <laughs> it's worth looking at if, you, if in future you want to, you struggle with these names. It's easy to find, put it in, and um, it, there it comes up. So it's, Tichicus. So now I've got a little story I'll start to tell you first. Um, Mr. Jones dies and he goes to heaven. And Peter is waiting at the gates to give him a tour. Amid the splendor of golden streets, beautiful mansions, choirs of angels and that, that Peter shows him, Mr. Jones notices an odd looking building. He thinks it looks like an enormous warehouse. It has no windows and only one door. He asks to see inside. Peter hesitates. You really don't want to see what's in there, he tells the new arrival. Why would there be any secrets in heaven, Jones wonders. What incredible surprise could be waiting for me in there? When the official tour is over, he's still wondering, so he asks again to see inside the structure. Peter finally relents. So when the apostle opens the door, Mr. Jones rushes in. It turns out that the enormous building is filled with row after row of shelves, floor to ceiling, each stacked neatly with white boxes tied with red ribbons. These boxes all have names on them, Mr. Jones shouts out aloud. Then turning to Peter, he asks, do I have one? Yes, you do, he said. Then Peter tries to guide Mr. Jones back outside. Frankly, Peter says, if I were you, but Mr. Jones is already dashing towards the J's. J.R. and he finds his box. Peter follows, shaking his head. He catches up with Mr. Jones just as he is slipping the red ribbon off the box and popping the lid. Looking inside, Jones has a moment of instant recognition and lets out a deep sigh like the ones Peter's heard so many times before. Because there in Mr. Jones's white box are all the blessings that God wanted to give him while he was on earth. But Mr. Jones had never asked. 
ask, promised Jesus, and it will be given to you. And that's in Matthew 7. You do not have to. You do not have because you do not ask. We find that's in James 4 too. Even, there's no, even though there's no limit to God's goodness, and even if what we desire is not forthcoming, if we didn't ask him for a blessing yesterday for ourselves or anyone else, we never received all that we were supposed to receive. And that's the catch. If we don't talk to him and ask for his blessings, we miss out on all sorts of his blessings that would come to us only when we ask. Prayer is more than just giving a, having a conversation with God. And the important element is also learning to ask for specific things. We know that God is always there by our side. We were talking about that earlier. In Matthew 28, Jesus says, I am with you always, always, even to the end of the age. So we need to get on and talk to him to develop our relationship with him. So if God is with us all time, at all times, we ought to think about talking with him, just as the Bible tells us to. Pray without ceasing. I don't know if any of you have uh, seen these little books that have been written by Brother Lawrence uh, many years ago. I think, in fact, I think it was centuries ago. Well, a friend gave us two of them recently, and we found them quite helpful, actually. And one book he wrote in a little collection of very sound teachings called The Practice of the Presence of God. Have you ever come across it? I will read you a small passage which I think encapsulates so well our relationship with God. I'll read you a bit. In fact, I think it's probably the best thing I've ever come across in, in explaining that. So here we go. Pray, remember what I have recommended to you, which is think often of, on God by day, by night, in your business, and even in your diversions. He is always near to you and with you. Leave him not alone. You would think it rude to leave a friend alone who came to visit you. Why then must God be neglected? Do not then forget about him often, but adore him continually. Live and die with him. This is the glorious employment of a Christian. In a word, this is our profession. And if we do not know it, we must learn it. Not easy, but this is in fact that is the type and nature of what our relationship with God should be. It's important that we learn to be alert, which is what he's asking for us, Paul, in this letter, and develop a closeness and conversation with God throughout the day. How difficult is that? God really wants far more than just a casual relationship with us. Prayer is hard, and it's certainly mysterious. Nobody seems to know how it works. It accomplishes things we could not do by our own efforts, but it still remains as a Christian the most practical thing that we can do. The great Christian leader of the 20th century, Arch Archbishop William Temple, declared, now I think this is lovely, whatever else one may say about whether prayer worked, he had noticed that when he prayed, coincidences happened. And when he stopped praying, coincidences stopped happening. How many of us have seen that? So often, of course, he never did think these things which happened were coincidences, but were clearly actual answers to prayer. This is actually how God works. So we must all take praying seriously. In asking for prayer for himself, Paul clearly believed that all the prayer was powerful and was valid from all people, no matter the level of their Christian journey. Even though he was an apostle, he knew that their prayers for him had just exactly the same power and importance and validity as his were for them. Now, personally, I find sustained prayer is something which I've sailed, failed <laughs> it's miserably. I think a lot of us have. Uh, I've never 
And I've never so far seriously been able to achieve this, um, but there we are, it's unfortunate. And there is a need to put now, it put some discipline in our prayer life. And I, I realize that it's, it's, it's so important. It's important for me and for, um, for, for all of us. Throughout the ages, many people have found a great advantage in keeping a small book and properly listing things, people and circumstances that we need to pray for. Done on a daily basis. I wonder how many of us actually do this. It's not something I've ever achieved satisfactorily. The best way, and it seems to be the usual way, is to get a notebook and then always use the two facing pages. On the left page, left side, on the, on the, yeah, on the left side, um, you write down your prayer, the date it was made, and on the right hand side, you can write down the answer, whether it was when it was answered, including if it was answered with a no. And it then becomes our own special prayer list. The thing is that by doing this, we forget nothing and God's answers become clearer. And I think that's a big point, actually. It's actually remembering that it's down there, remembering that we prayed that, and then we can actually see what God says. Now, we used to go to an Anglican church, Margaret and I, in, in Hastings, and some years ago, the lovely rector who was there, and I count him as the man who helped me back to the Lord because I wandered away from the Lord, as many do in their 30s. <laughs> um, and he, he helped me back on my journey back to God. And they had a prayer list of all the men, husbands, relations, brothers, etc., that were non-churchgoers, but related to lady church members. And there was repeated prayer for all these men and one by one, over a period of time, all of them, without exception, came to the Lord. And they, it was known at the time as the hit list. So I think it's a lovely name. The church, so the church watched all the time God's answering these prayers. And it would be lovely if our prayer diary could be a hit list and just watch God at work. Even though God already knows our prayers, I do not personally believe that God bothering, which is what they often refer to it as, or repeated prayer about any situation or person is at all wrong. I believe that is what God actually wants. If we pray for something over and over again, day after day, week after week, even if nothing appears to be happening at that point, God is still working. And God does speak. If we're not too sure what we should be praying for, he may tell us to change the prayer request and tell us it's not right, or our heart may suddenly feel that it's not right to ask for a certain thing. And we may even feel that God is saying to us, simply stop praying for a situation. And we'd never know this if we didn't keep on praying that particular thing. And I'm quite sure God tells us very clearly when we are praying for the wrong thing. I mean, if we pray to win the lottery, <laughs> it would doubtless be noted by God. He put it down. Yes, you prayed for the lottery, but, but he would re then remind us how, how he provides for us all any rate and make it clear that we should be praying perhaps for some other topic or need. So having written down in our book all our prayers, it will stop us forgetting them and make these answers clearer some things must stay on our prayer list for a long term maybe all our lives the great thing is that the more we pray the more we see god working there's no other re no other example we can find if you, if you pray we can then see god working and it's not unreasonable to pray just the same way for things that seem quite impossible Paul's situation but being chained up as he was in there wasn't exactly the best place for him to be preaching but he boldly continues to pray for the effectiveness of his message and sent on Tychicus by taking the message on so continued prayer is necessary and great and we will never know how many situations are simply in boxes on God's shelves in heaven 
just waiting for a few more prayers before they are already delivered. The more we pray, the more seriously we pray, the more we will find the Lord will be taking those blessings prayed out of our white box in heaven and delivering them to us. Amen.